So we're going to talk now about uh, infant choking. So our, for our purposes, the infant is defined as a one year and below. So if I come across an infant who I think might be choking, first I have to pick them up. Okay, so in order to pick them up, I will access the head first and then take the buttocks and then pick them up this way so that we're safe. Okay, I'll move to a chair so that I can be more stable. Okay, now uh, in choking, the best way to relieve any airway obstruction would be uh, for the patient to cough it out themselves. So even babies will have a cough reflex. So if they're choking on something, which means that there's something in the airway rather than in the tube going to the stomach, then they will be coughing. So if they're able to cough it out themselves, that would be better. So I'll try to support the baby, see if they're able to cough anything out themselves. Uh, and if there's signs of severe airway obstruction, then I have to intervene. So signs of severe airway obstruction are, for one, uh, they're trying to cry but there's no sound, or the baby's already turning blue. So these may be signs that the airway is completely blocked. And so then I have to intervene. So um, for babies, for infants, one year and below, uh, I cannot do a Heimlich maneuver on them. So the version for infants would be for me to do uh, back, back slaps and chest thrusts. Okay, so first thing to do is to make sure that we're stable and we don't drop the baby. Okay, now I'm going to grasp the baby uh, with his stomach and chest on my forearm. I'll take my hand and support the bony parts of the baby's face, taking care not to obviously choke the baby and also not to smother the baby with my hand. So I'll be holding the bony parts, the cheek and the jaw. Okay, I will align the baby face down on my forearm, legs straddling my forearm this way, arms on either side, and supporting the baby's head. Uh, I'd like to open the airway a little bit to allow for any foreign body to come out. For further stability, I'm going to put my arm on my leg this way so that it's stable. My foot is flat on the ground, uh, my leg is stable, and my arm is resting flat on the leg there. Uh, in this setup, I'd like for the baby's mouth to be lower than the baby's chest so that it will encourage foreign bodies to come out. So if it's not lower yet, then I can extend my foot a little bit to create the angle where the baby's mouth is lower. In this position, I'm going to be giving five back slaps. The purpose of the back slap is to generate a little bit of force coming out of the lungs in order to try to expel the foreign body to a place where they can cough it out. Okay, so I'm going to use the heel of my hand and I'm going to strike the baby between the shoulder blades using an upward stroke. I have to strike the baby quite hard in order to generate this force. Now it may be a little distressing to strike a baby that hard, but just remember the baby's airway in this, at this time is blocked. And if we do not remove the blockage, this baby will die in a few minutes. So what we're doing now is actually saving the baby's life. Any injury that we cause to the back or the bones of the baby is secondary, but at least they'll be alive, okay? So, I'll, I'll aim between the shoulder blades, use the heel of my hand, five back slaps, like so. So hopefully I've expelled the foreign body, but I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to take my other arm, forearm, lay it on the baby's back this way, and take my hand and support the head, and at this point, from this position, I can transfer to my other leg this way. Okay, now once I'm stable on my other leg, I arrange the uh, legs so that they're straddling. I have the, I'm supporting the baby's head from underneath and opening the patient's airway. Now I'm gonna do five chest thrusts. It's the same purpose as the back slaps, but from the, from the other side. I'll take two fingers right here, just below the nipple line and I'll press. So this one is a press, not a strike. And I'll do that five times as well, forcefully. Okay, so at this point, I can actually also look inside the mouth of the baby to see if there's any foreign body expelled, uh, like food particles or anything like that. If I see anything that I might be able to remove, then I can attempt to remove it. But never attempt a blind finger sweep, which is just to put your finger in there and see if you can find anything. It may actually end up pushing the foreign body deeper into the baby's throat, okay? So only if I can see it, then I can remove it. 
I can either do a finger sweep if it's things like rice or baby food or I can do a finger pick if it's something a little more solid like nuts or something like that. Okay, from this position, if the baby still has an airway obstruction, I will repeat the process I did earlier. So again, I put my hands supporting the bony parts of the baby's face and taking care not to compress on the neck. I lay my forearm over the front of the baby and I'll transfer to the other leg. Once I'm stable here, arrange the baby so that it's stable, open the airway a little bit, and then I continue with the five back slams. Okay. Then I'll repeat the process I did earlier, transferring back to the other leg and doing the chest thrusts. And checking again if the foreign body has been expelled. Now I'm going to keep on doing this process as long as the baby is still uh, choking or has severe airway obstruction. Now uh, when will I stop this? Uh, first is if we're able to expel the foreign body. So what we're expecting here is that the foreign body is dislodged and the baby ends up coughing it out. Okay, so if the foreign body is expelled, then we can bring the baby up, supporting the head and buttocks, and this will help it breathe, the baby breathe more easily. If the baby becomes unresponsive, which means uh, they get unconscious, then we can no longer do this maneuver. Remember, we can only do this for babies that are conscious because we need them to cough the foreign body out. If they're unconscious, they won't be able to protect their airway. So if we dislodge the foreign body, it may fall deeper into the airway. So uh, if the baby's unconscious, then we have to do CPR, which is a different process. Okay, so, but if the baby's conscious, then this is what we can do until we're able to dislodge the foreign body and the baby can breathe freely. At this point, we can observe the baby if they're breathing freely. Uh, and if needed, then we may actually need to consult a health professional.